Hello everyone, Dr. Sunil Dand, medical doctor. Welcome to another video. I would like to share with you in this video some alarming data from a small European country. Now, as I've said many times before, when we're looking at data and trends, especially as a lot of us have been looking at trends over the last few years, we have to look at data from reliable sources. And sadly, the United States of America isn't one of them. Even though I work in this country and there may be many good things about America, data collection isn't one of them. Data collection here is completely and utterly rubbish. And the best thing to do when you're trying to answer larger scientific and medical questions is look at data that is emerging from these smaller European countries, which keep very accurate records. So even countries like Israel, but certainly not the United States of America. So on that note, I'm going to share with you some alarming data from the country of Scotland. And when we're looking at this, bear in mind that what is happening in countries like Scotland is often a microcosm for what is going on in larger European countries like the United States of America. Take a look at this. So here we have the Herald newspaper, a Scottish newspaper, and I will share the link with you down below. Deaths in Scotland are on the rise. So what's the cause? And a very sad picture here of a coffin. Are more people than usual dying in Scotland? The simple answer is, it depends what you are counting. So that does indeed sound like a very strange thing to say. What does it mean by, it depends on what you are counting? Let's dive in. The question that is trickier to unravel is exactly why some causes are on the rise while others seem unexpectedly low. Also puzzling is evidence that the increase in the death rate is more pronounced among young adults aged 20 to 24 than it is among elderly Scots in their 80s. Well, that is extremely concerning. Why are younger people aged 20 to 24 dying in larger numbers than you would expect? On Thursday, the National Records of Scotland published its monthly mortality analysis for March. So this monthly mortality analysis, you can click on the link. Here it is. And as I always say, always go to the source of data, never rely on the mainstream media. And it's a very interesting document to read. The latest publication means that we now have a full set of statistics covering the first quarter of 2023, albeit provisional. So this is very recent data, the first quarter of 2023. It doesn't get more recent than that, as of the time of making this video. So what does it tell us? In total, there were 17,464 deaths registered between January and the end of March, compared to the average for the same period in 2017, 18, 19, 21, and 22. The death toll in 2023 was 8.2% higher. Yes, you heard correctly, 8.2% higher, almost 10% higher. What could be going on? It talks about how there are implications for frontline services. However, with an increasingly elderly population and a population that is growing in size, it is inevitable that the number of deaths would increase. Yes, number would, but not the percentage. The more statistically significant figure is the age standardized mortality rate, which measures changing mortality patterns after adjusting for these shifting demographics so that the trends can be gauged more fairly year on year. When compared against the five-year average, we actually see a 2.4% increase in the mortality rate, up from 1,249, suggesting that we have registered roughly 30 additional deaths per 100,000 residents than we might have expected. The patterns varies, however, depending on the age groups or cause. So as it said at the beginning, it talks about the different age groups involved, the elderly, which didn't see a big rise plus the sad fact that many of them may have succumbed during the acute phase of the pandemic. That's something else to think about. Oddly, however, it is the opposite end of the spectrum which is showing a more obvious uptick. In the 20 to 24 age group, the mortality rate in January to March this year was 15% higher than the five-year average. Just let that sink in for a moment. 20 to 24 years old, 15% higher than the usual average. This sounds dramatic, but it also has to be put into the context of comparatively small numbers. Well, yes, Scotland is a small country, 5.5 million people, but still you don't want to see increases in this age group. A total of 43 deaths were registered, translating into a mortality rate of 55 per 100,000 versus a five-year average of 48 per 100,000. To put it another way, if you were aged 20 to 24 and living in Scotland from January to March this year, your probability of dying was roughly 1 in 1,820. That still seems a rather high number for a 20 to 24 year old. So it talks about how the overall picture for young adults, 20 to 40 years old, shows a 10% reduction in mortality. 
Arguably, the more important question for policymakers is what are people dying from and were those deaths preventable? So it dives into some causes here, deaths from dementia, non-pandemic related respiratory causes, and the death rate from circulatory causes, strokes, blood clots, heart attacks, heart disease, brain hemorrhages, and so on, is up very slightly at around 1%. But then look at this here, what really stands out is the death rate from other causes, an umbrella term for everything else. They talk about how this rate was 13% higher than the 5 year average. The category accounted for 1 in 4 deaths registered during that period. So I'd really like more information on what other causes means exactly. They talk about how it is difficult to say what exactly is driving the trend. They do touch upon alcohol specific deaths. Then they say deaths from diabetes were up 12%, falls by 12%, chronic liver disease by 9%, and diseases of the kidney by 19%. Well, you wouldn't expect that in younger people, those causes right there. Detailed scrutiny of the other category is needed. Well, no kidding, Sherlock. Well, those are very striking numbers indeed. And of course, we have to ask questions. What could be going on here? Don't expect much from our mainstream media or our establishment, including the medical establishment. We may see stories like this reported sporadically, but they are not going to dive in and really ask the tough questions. So we have to instead, we have to stay on top of these stories. I certainly will and will keep sharing data and news with you as I see stories emerge. But let's think about this. We are over the acute phase of the pandemic and I've reported in many videos these surges in excess deaths. Why would it be occurring now after the acute phase of the pandemic? Why are we seeing younger people pass away in higher numbers? It's an absolute tragedy. Now it touched upon a few possible causes there in the article. Are these young people suffering from medical conditions? Are they having cardiac events? Is alcohol involved? Are drugs involved? Now Scotland, of course, like many Western countries, does have problems with alcohol and drug abuse, especially in younger age groups. But it is nowhere near as bad as it is in certain countries like the United States, where there are problems such as fentanyl addiction and a whole host of illegal drugs that are more easily available. I don't think Scotland is suffering as badly as the United States. But still, all of these questions have to be asked. What are these young people dying off and why are we seeing these alarming statistical rises? Even if they are small numbers in terms of absolute numbers in a smaller country like Scotland, it is still an absolute tragedy. And we are not diving into these stories enough or asking the obvious questions. So I will endeavor to keep looking at this data and sharing it with you here. We have to keep asking questions. That is what medicine and science is all about, especially tough questions. Thanks everyone for listening. Let me know your thoughts down below. Check out my online course and my uncensored platform. Those links are down below. Remember, huge swathes of the medical establishment are completely and utterly corrupted. And one of the best things you can do for your health and the health and well-being of your family is to empower yourself. Stay aware, stay educated, and do everything in your power to stay healthy and stay away from mainstream medicine and doctors. Hit the like button if you like this video and the bell button for more similar videos in the future. We will talk again very soon.